On March 16th, the U.S. and Japanese foreign ministers and defense ministers held a ministerial level 2 plus 2 meeting in Tokyo. The joint statement released after the meeting expressed grave concern about the implementation of the People's Republic of China Maritime Police Law on February the 1st of this year, which allows maritime police vessels to use weapons to fire on foreign vessels. The Treaty of Mutual Cooperation and Security between the United States and Japan, which includes the Senkaku Islands, also known as the Diaoyu Islands in China, which is in territorial disputes with China, was reaffirmed in Article 5 of the treaty. The Japanese minister also stressed the importance of peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait and again referred to the 2016 arbitration results of the Permanent Court of Arbitration and opposed to China's illegal maritime activities to build artificial islands and military bases in the South China Sea. After the meeting, Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga met with the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin at the Prime Minister's residence. According to Japanese media, Suga exchanged views with Blinken and Austin on the regional situation. The three expressed serious concern about China's passage of the Marine Police Act. They agreed on the need to strengthen the response capabilities of the U.S.-Japan alliance. Austin also emphasized that the U.S.-Japan alliance is a strategic foundation of the United States in the Indo-Pacific region, and that he looked forward to future cooperation between the United States and Japan to work toward a free and open Indo-Pacific. The U.S.-Japan 2 plus 2 ministerial meeting took place four days after the recent concluded video meeting of the four leaders of the Quad, the U.S., Japan, Australia, and India on the 12th. The four countries stressed again the security of the East China Sea and the South China Sea. The joint statement issued after the meeting titled The Spirit of Quad said, We commit to promoting a free, open rules-based order, rooted in international law to advance security and prosperity and counter threats to both in the Indo-Pacific and beyond. We support the rule of law, freedom of navigation and overflight, peaceful resolution of disputes, democratic values and territorial integrity. Although China was not named in the statement, it was obvious that it was a target. It is not difficult to see that both the Quad Conference and the U.S.-Japan 2 plus 2 ministerial meetings are related to tensions in the South China Sea and Taiwan Strait. Since last year, the U.S. and China have been engaged in ongoing military confrontations in the South China Sea and Taiwan Strait. And since February this year, the northeast of Taiwan, less than 200 kilometers away from the Diaoyu Island area, Chinese maritime police vessels frequently enter and expel Japanese fishing boats. But this is not a new action. It has been a long history of the Chinese Navy and Coastal Guard coordinating local fishermen and turns them into armed militia. The fishermen are used to provide logistical support to Chinese naval vessels, such as ammunition and fuel. In April 2020, the New York Times reported that Chinese fishing fleets in Southeast Asia are protected by armed Coastal Guard vessels during fishing. The Chinese Coastal Guard has even attacked and seized fishing vessels of other countries in the South China Sea where there is a territorial dispute and confiscated their catch and equipment. This year, China escalated its actions. On February 1, 2021, the maritime police law of the People's Republic of China came into force. The new police law gives the Chinese maritime police vessels the right to open fire under certain circumstances. Japanese Cabinet Secretary Kato Katsunobu said in an interview on February 1 that the Japanese government is concerned about the new law. The Japanese government said at a joint meeting of the National Defense Ministry and Security Investigation Council on February 25th that if the crew of a foreign public vessel intends to land on the Senkaku Island, the Japanese Coast Guard can take defensive operations and shoot to prevent them from doing so by law. But many Japanese are worried that China has unilaterally changed the regional status and that the regional conflict may turn into a hot war. In fact, after the implementation of the new maritime police law, Chinese Coast Guard vessels have been entering the waters of the Senkaku Islands for so-called law enforcement. According to Kyoto News on March 13th, China has reiterated to Japan through official diplomatic channels that the Diaoyu Islands are China's inherited territory. The Chinese official also stressed that the Chinese Coast Guards are conducting routine patrols in the waters and the incoming Japanese fishing boats will be examined. The reason why the Chinese Coast Guard has the courage to make a high-profile appearance in the waters of the distributed territories in the South China Sea, blatantly bullying neighboring countries' fishing boats and non-military official vessels is because it has a strong combat capability. The Chinese Coast Guard is internationally regarded as a white menace because their public vessels often use more tactical actions than necessary and have been involved in maritime bullying in Vietnam, Malaysia and as far as the waters of Ecuador. 
Let's look deeper. The Chinese Coast Guard is actually China's second naval force. In fact, it did belong to the Chinese People's Armed Police Force and are under the command of the Central Military Commission of the Communist Party of China with the Two Million People's Liberation Army. However, they are not officially recognized as military. By June 2019, the number of vessels of the Chinese Coast Guard above 1,000 tons reached 145, while the number of vessels of the Japanese Coast Guard above 1,000 tons was 67 in the same period, which was less than half of the Chinese Coast Guard. Most China's military information is not open. According to the available information, as of September last year, the Chinese Coast Guard fleet has 23 law enforcement vessels with a displacement of over 3,000 tons. 14 of them are in the 4,000 ton class, of which 3 are over 10,000 tons. Some industry leaders summed up the three deadly features of the Chinese Coast Guard vessels, which includes the following. First, large tonnage and structure which is comparable to Navy-class warships. The total tonnage of the Chinese fleet exceeds the sum of Coast Guard vessels in the United States and Japan. It also has the world's largest marine police vessels, the 2901, 3901, and Sea Patrol 09, which have a displacement of more than 12,000 tons and a speed of more than 25 knots that can directly ram large military vessels and destroy them. Second, the vessels are equipped with weapons. A 3,000-ton or larger marine police ship is equipped with a 76mm main gun, two 30mm secondary guns, two anti-aircraft guns, but also equipped with 630-type rapid-fire near defense guns, along with other equipment such as machine guns, high-pressure water cannon, and sound equipment. The main gun is a HPJ-26 76mm rapid-fire gun, which has a rate of fire of 120 rounds per minute and has a maximum effective range of 12,000 meters to the sea and 4,000 meters to the air. The two secondary guns are HPJ-14 30mm rapid-fire naval guns with an effective range of 3,000 meters and a maximum range of 8,000 meters. Third, the design and construction of the Chinese Coast Guard vessels far exceed the standard of other countries. The 10,000-ton law enforcement ship mentioned above is very similar in size to China's latest 10,000-ton O-55 destroyers, with a helicopter platform and hangar, which can carry heavy armed helicopters. Many professionals have concluded that the Chinese medium and the largest Coast Guard vessels are equipped with the mature hull and power of the existing warships and are equipped with sea and air search radar, fire control radar, and naval guns, except that they are not equipped with missiles. Moreover, during the construction process, there are modules reserved for future installation of weapons so that, if needed, those vessels can quickly be transformed into a real warship. For reference, China's 10,000-ton marine police vessels are larger than the U.S. Navy's 9,800-ton Ticonderoga-class cruiser and the 8,300-ton Arleigh Burke-class destroyer. China's 3,900-ton marine police ship has displacement and gun power greater than the U.S. Navy's Freedom-class littoral combat ship, while the Vietnam Navy's largest warship, the Cheetah-class frigate, has a full load displacement of only 2,100 tons. The Coast Guard, in fact, also embodies the Chinese Communist Party's strategy of hiding the military in the people. One of the Chinese Communist Party's military philosophy is that all people are soldiers. During the war years, the CCP's military force was divided into three major levels. The regular army, the local troops, and the militia. The so-called militia was further divided into men, women, and children. In the slogan of the Chinese Communist propaganda, let the enemy be buried in the ocean of people. The naval strategy of the Chinese Communist Party is not free from this formula. In essence, there are three levels of naval forces, the PLA Navy, the Marine Police or the Coast Guard, and the Fishermen's Militia. China has 200,000 fishing vessels, including 17,000 well-equipped ocean-going vessels, the largest in the world in terms of number and gross tonnage, and employs 14 million people, or 25% of the world's fishermen. The Chinese Navy and Coast Guard are responsible for their military training and political education, and the government also provides substantial subsidies. Fishing vessels are equipped with advanced electronic equipment, including communication systems and radars, which can interact with the Chinese Coast Guard and the Navy. At least 50,000 vessels are also equipped with a satellite navigation, which can monitor and transmit their position and collect and report marine intelligence. The Chinese government funds a large number of fishermen militia and supports their role in the disputed waters. In April 2013, the Communist Party's General Secretary Xi Jinping visited the fishermen's militia in Tianmen, Hainan province, 
demonstrating the importance of the forces. In 2016, Australian media reported that 230 Chinese fishing boats swarmed the island in disputed waters in the South China Sea. And in August 2020, more than 100 fishing boats entered the waters near the Senkaku Islands, a disputed territory between China and Japan. Moreover, Chinese official media also promotes and reports Chinese fishermen's militia action. For example, in July 2020, People's Daily Online reported that 80% of fishermen in the village of Yongxing Island have joined the marine militia. And in 2015, the PLE media reported that the militia went to sea and fishing boats became mobile posts. On the night of March 30, 2020, a Chinese fishing vessel collided with a destroyer in the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force. The Chinese vessel showed little damage while the Japanese destroyer's port side was hit with a hole 1 meter long and 20 centimeter wide. In addition, a lot of the U.S. sonar equipment placed on the international water of the South China Sea was salvaged by Chinese fishermen. In 2009, a set of pictures appeared on the Chinese internet showing a U.S. Navy ship painted with the Chinese words, Sonar is useless and worth a little was followed by several Chinese fishing vessels. And that's why China is ignoring warnings from other countries being arrogant and domineering in the South China Sea, because it has the world's largest navy. In the event of war, the Chinese Coast Guard can be transformed into the second navy, and every fisherman could become an armed militia.